Today on TCU News Now, we take a look at how two former Frogs feel about taking their play to the NFL. And a TCU student has overcome more adversity than most, working through many obstacles to become a successful musician. We have your news now. From the Schieffer School of Journalism, this is TCU News Now. Hello and welcome to the last newscast of the spring semester. I'm Mandy Neglich. And I'm Kayla Travis. Two former TCU football players were selected in the NFL draft last weekend. Linebacker Tank Carter was selected in the fifth round by the Buffalo Bills, and cornerback and return specialist Greg McCoy was drafted in the seventh round by the Chicago Bears. Brett Musselwhite has details. Tank Carter spent draft weekend with his family, hoping to have his dream come true. He was with his dad when he got the call he'd been waiting for. I was eating crawfish. My hands were all full of mess from them crawfish and my phone started ringing so I was wiping my hands off, looked at it and said New York. It was just a random number, it said New York. I answered and it was the Bills. The Bills told him they would take him with the next pick. He said he couldn't explain exactly how he felt when he got off the phone. Greatest time of my life so it's, I can't even explain the feeling. It's, I could just give you details but as far as the feeling it's unmatched. Greg McCoy said there were a lot of emotions throughout the weekend but he is just grateful for the chance to play at the next level. At the moment when they called my name, I was just thinking, thank God, <laughs> thank God, um, uh, this is an opportunity I have to take advantage of. He said playing in the NFL is something he's wanted to do since he was little. You know, I remember playing the, the video games and, uh, you know, creating yourself on the game, so now I don't have to create myself anymore. <laughs> so it's a, it's a great experience. The Rose Bowl was big. But the 2009 win over Utah was bigger for Carter. That was the first time I actually seen myself on ESPN highlights. So that was the time it kind of clicked that I could play in the NFL. And Both of them said they learned important lessons at TCU. So no matter what you're doing, you know, do it to the best of your ability. Do it to the fullest. Don't ever take nothing off. Don't ever take a playoff or anything. But the main thing is just hard work. I, I just here we believe if you work hard, you know, you'll get great results. And um, Carter has a two-year-old son and is getting married in July. He said his family is the biggest motivation for him. Every morning I wake up, that's my motivation to go out there and just take this day head on and, and, and be the best that I can at whatever I'm doing. McCoy said he shared a 15-minute hug with his grandmother after he was drafted. Making her happy is what motivates him. I cherish the fact that she, she is so happy for me that it feels like it's her, so, so, so that I so when I'm able to do that for her, it makes me feel good inside. The next step for Carter and McCoy is rookie minicamp, where they will fight to earn a roster spot on their new team. Brett Musselwhite, TCU News Now. Tight end Logan Brock and defensive end Braylon Broughton also found their way into NFL camps by signing free agent contracts. Brock signed with the Houston Texans, and Broughton signed with the New Orleans Saints. Jordan Daigle will be in the studio later with other top stories in sports. There are 85 parking meters installed in Fort Worth. Two of those meters are in front of popular restaurants close to campus like Buffalo Bros. According to the Fort Worth's parking meter manager, the parking meters will show how often the spaces are used. The parking manager said there are no plans for additional parking meters on or around campus. The start of the fall 2012 semester will also be the start of an era in a new conference and a new stadium. TCU administration and SGA are working hard to make sure opening week is a special event. Maddie Solari has the story. The new Amon Carter Stadium is set to open Saturday, September 8th, right before the Frogs' first game against Grambling State. To honor the new stadium, TCU is planning numerous events starting Monday, September 3rd for what it's calling opening week. Obviously, going to the Big 12, having a new stadium, it's going to be the biggest, one of the biggest weeks for athletics in the history of TCU. Um, so the whole week is going to be just huge events. Each day of opening week will be dedicated to a different TCU group, including faculty, staff, alumni, and students day. Really what we're looking to do is just kind of build energy and excitement for the students about um, everything that's going on related to the stadium and that first game. Student day activities are not yet concrete. But Fallen said they plan to provide lots of entertainment, free food, and they already have a t-shirt designed free for all undergraduate students. I just, I would love to have the whole student body there. Of course, students will have night class, but if you're free that night, this is not something that you want to miss because you'll definitely regret it. 
One event students can definitely look forward to is a concert in front of the stadium on Friday evening. Fullen said Chancellor Boschini was the mastermind behind the concert and was able to book country superstar Blake Shelton. Well, I think a stadium grand opening is so rare because it only happens once every 50 to 100 years. And so um, athletics and the chancellor were really excited and uh, about the event and wanted to make sure that that excitement spilled over to everybody else. The plans for student day will be finalized by the end of summer break. Fullen said it will be an eventful and memorable week, not just for TCU students, but for all Horned Rock fans. Maddie Solari, TCU News Now. I'm really looking forward to that. I think the whole campus is looking forward to opening week. Yeah, if I can break away from, you know, vacationing on a tropical island, then I'll try to come back and, you know, see it. <laughs> More news from the SGA, the decision by the TCU House of Student Representatives to suspend the TCU Constitution of the student body has received mixed responses. The Constitution is one of the SGA's governing documents and members found it inc inconsistent with the student body code. John V. Roach Honors College Representative Trevor Melvin disagreed with the decision to suspend the Constitution and said individual guidelines should have been suspended then revised in the proper process. Chairman of Elections and Regulations Committee Jansen Harrison said suspending the Constitution was something that needed to be done so SGA could continue to change in a way that helped the student body. It sounds like SGA has been busy, a busy group lately. As you get ready for your finals, one class has only crumbs left from one of their final projects. I'm already getting hungry. Brittany Rainville is here to tell us more. Yes, I had the opportunity to taste what the students in the Gourmet Foods class learned throughout the semester at the annual reception with some special guests. Desserts, hors d'oeuvres, and heavy appetizers on the menu. Students and their guests dined on delicacies that the class has been planning for weeks. The presentation was wonderful, the food was tremendous. Everything was really laid out nice and it tasted even better. So. Gourmet Foods professor Ann Van Bieber says for the past 11 years that she's put on the reception, she hasn't allowed students to bring just anyone as guests. So it's someone who that they admire or respect or someone who has been a mentor to them over their life or their years in college. So it's an honor to get invited. During the reception, each student introduced their guests and explained why they chose to invite them. It made a really big impact in my life, you know, just uh, teaching me how to be a gentleman, how to be a man of principle. Senior strategic communication major Megan Chamberlain chose to invite her professor, Brock Sears. He's just kind of the teacher that sort of stuck with me throughout my years here at TCU. And his favorite dish? A mascarpone toast, kind of an appetizer, which after I ate it and liked it so much, I found out it's actually one of the dishes that Megan created. After learning how to make progress in the kitchen, students were reminded of who has helped them make progress in their lives. You can visit TCU360.com to see a cooking demo where Megan teaches how to make chicken with orange Dijon pan sauce using the skills she learned in the class. That orange sauce sounds really good. It sounds so good. I'm going to need the recipe because ramen noodles is getting kind of old at my house. <laughs> <laughs> it was really easy to make and I already had all the ingredients at home. Sounds good. Perfect. After a year of work, TCU's engineering seniors finally had the opportunity to pr present their completed design projects and research. Tyler Press has the story. This is the view from inside a flight simulation display. This is a prototype engine. TCU engineering seniors finally had the opportunity to present their completed work to their sponsors, classmates, and parents. Adam Henning worked on the engine and said his experience was rewarding. When we finally ran the engine, and it, and it ran actually, being the first people anywhere ever to make an epistronal engine run was really, really cool process to be a part of. The design project gave the seniors a chance to take part in interactive work outside of a traditional classroom setting. Working with everybody, honestly, and finally getting to do a real project, having hands-on, I got to work with the engine and actually take it apart, put it together. It was really cool to get that hands-on learning. The seniors completed their work with only a few snares. The biggest challenge for me was probably uh, the large amount of people we had, uh, finding everyone's you know, niche, finding everyone's um, like best thing to do. With their year's work now behind them, Henning and Gomez said they both enjoyed their time spent on the projects and are ready to put their knowledge to use after graduation. Yeah, definitely ready to graduate and then, uh, just apply all the engineering we've learned here. So it's been a great experience. 
Tyler Press, TCU News Now. For more on TCU Engineering, visit engr.tcu.edu. For an update on the sustainability class project this semester, log, log on to tcu360.com. Biology professor Phil Hartman was named interim dean of college and science and engineering after Dean Demetrius Corus resigned in April. Reasons for Corus's resignation are unknown, but Hartman says he has been very helpful in the transition process. A search for Corus's replacement will begin in the upcoming months. Hartman says he is a willing candidate for the position, though he would miss teaching his biology students and being in the classroom. Now we'll toss it to Jordan Daigle and Clint Foster for the top stories in sports. Thanks, Kayla. The TCU baseball team swept its weekend series against Manhattan. After a 2-1 extra inning win on Friday, the Frogs exploded for 23 runs in the final two games of the series. Future Big 12 Conference foe Oklahoma made a visit to Cowtown on Tuesday, and the Frogs won on a late inning scoring rally. TCU trailed 3-1 going into the eighth inning, but tied the game at three with a flurry of singles, followed by a walk and an RBI ground out. The Frogs capitalized on two Oklahoma errors in the ninth, and Derek O'Dell singled in the winning run with two outs. The 4-3 win pushes TCU's record to 27-15 on the season. So not many athletes give up a sport they're good at, but one TCU baseball player did just that. Isn't that right, Clint? That's right. Once an outstanding tennis player, Jansen Witte left the courts for the baseball diamond and has not looked back. Hornfrog fans know third baseman Jansen Witte well for his skill on the baseball field. But what many don't know is that Witte gave up another passion to play baseball, tennis. In my freshman year of high school, I ended up giving it up, just felt like I got a little burnt out. Tennis I mean, takes a lot out of you, you got to play, you got to practice every day and you're traveling a lot. So, And we felt like I needed to stick with one sport so I could make it to the next level. He may not like to admit it, but Witte was good at tennis, very good. When he was 14, he was ranked the number one tennis player in Texas and seventh in the nation for his age group. He stopped playing the next year. My dad always kind of made a joke that, you know, I'm, we don't know, but I'm probably maybe the only guy to, you know, really quit on top in like junior tennis. Woody started playing baseball when he was three and tennis when he was six. He quickly fell in love with both. Initially, though, tennis was more of a necessity than something that a young Jansen sought out. My dad's office was across the street from a um, tennis center, and so it ended up being kind of like a daycare for me. I'm not sure how old I was, but I think he got sick of me running around uh, his office getting in his way. He's a dentist, so he didn't want me, you know, hands in people's mouths. It wasn't that far, but... Woody was always active, and tennis, as well as baseball, came naturally to him. Before he could walk, he was kicking balls and rolling balls. Everything was a ball. His favorite thing was a ball. He would hit balls over the house when he was two. When it came time for Jansen to choose between baseball and tennis, it wasn't a hard decision. He was drawn to the team aspect of baseball and the opportunities it presented. I think the team atmosphere of baseball always called him. Tennis is such a lonely sport when you're out by yourself, and he loves the camaraderie of the team. It's safe to say Jansen made the right decision. At TCU, he has a career batting average of 348 with 10 home runs and 99 RBIs. Teammate Jason Coates attributes tennis to part of Woody's success. Especially at third base, his hand-eye coordination is unreal. He makes some of the uh, most ridiculous plays ever at third base, and you just wonder how he does it. And I think a lot of it has to do with tennis, and I think he's even he would even admit that it's helped him in baseball a lot. Woody's teammates respect him for his leadership and work ethic. More than anything else, it is Woody's love for the team that motivates him. Uh, he keeps the team loose. He's kind of the funny guy on the team. And I mean, he's, he's an amazing player and uh, he's really helped this program move along. Going into his senior season, Woody is particularly excited about the stage that the Big 12 will offer. And coming from a family of Texas Longhorns, the conference change only motivates him to work harder. <laughs> No matter what the future holds, Woody will wear his TCU uniform with pride and give baseball everything he has. Woody admits that he misses tennis and hasn't had a chance to play for fun recently. However, he hopes to pick up a racket again during his off time this summer. 
man, I wish I was automatically amazing at every sport that I tried. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. I am not a good tennis player. <laughs> Well, former TCU linebacker Tanner Brock is rumored to be transferring to the University of Texas El Paso. Former Horned Frog and recent draftee of the Buffalo Bills, Tank Carter, spoke on a radio show on 105.3 The Fan Monday, saying the last he heard was that Brock would be transferring to UTEP to join his brother Cooper. Cooper Brock is a sophomore defensive end for the Miners. Tanner's other brother and former teammate Logan Brock said that the news of Tanner's transfer is a complete rumor. Carter spoke out on Twitter saying he did not confirm anything about a transfer. UTEP athletics officials declined comment on whether they had contacted Brock. Brock was one of four TCU football players removed from the team after being arrested on suspicion of selling drugs. Those, well, those are the week's top stories. Back to you, ladies. Thanks for that sports update, guys. President Obama is asking Congress to act now to save students' money on college loans. On July 1st, interest rates on the Stafford student loans will double to 6.8 percent unless Congress passes new legislation. The president is asking people to tweet their lawmakers to urge them to block this increase. Republicans say they will keep the lower interest rates if they can take the money out of the health care budget for breast cancer screenings. Graduates in one ma major may find it easier to pay back loans than others. Crystal Galvan is in the newsroom with more. With another year coming to an end and another group of students entering the workforce, I take a look at which majors offer college grads an advantage going into the real world and which leave graduates a bit limited. We begin college chasing a passion, just like Nara Manuel and Sarah Hackwith did. But not all passions result in a lucrative job after college. Mechanical engineering major Manuel has chosen a major that is at top of the list of highest paying majors for 2011 through 2012 according to thebestcolleges.org. Thing that I can work with in many companies, many areas, I'm very flexible with that major. I don't have to stick at one particular thing. The site specifies that petroleum engineering has a base salary of nearly $100,000 for recent graduates, which is exactly the path Manuel would like to take. I'd love to work at an oil company and just work at their oil sites and see if I can work with the products that they have or the big equipment that they have, fixing it, finding better ways to um, extract the oil. However, it wasn't the high salary that attracted her to petroleum engineering. My father and most of my dad's part of the family are in engineering. My dad did petroleum engineering. My uncles did petroleum engineering, so I'm just, I grew up in an engineering family. Finding out about the high salary that awaits her after college was just another perk to choosing her major. It makes me very enthusiastic to see what's going to happen when I do graduate, how things are going to play out when that time does come. Other majors are not exactly going to come with a profitable job after graduation, as ballet and modern dance double major Sarah Hackwith understands. It's incredibly challenging to get a job because there aren't that many jobs and there's not a lot of funding and a lot of people see art and dance especially as something that is unnecessary that you could kind of do without and so because of that a lot of people don't pay attention to it. So you kind of have to fight for your job. This particular passion comes with twice the work as dance majors like Hackwith have learned that they must have another outlet for income. They encourage you to really look at those things that you enjoy and are good at outside of the dance world and figure out a way to combine them with the art, art form so you can support yourself. Despite the challenge of finding a job, a love for performance seems to trump money. For me, performing is most important, so I'm going to be looking for jobs that I can fit with my dance. To learn just how much the highest paying majors earn, check out TCU360.com. Back to you guys. The end of the semester means it's time for students to give back their textbooks, which means it's time for us to make some money. TCU students can sell back textbooks to the TCU Bookstore. The bookstore is open from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. daily. Students can also be on the lookout for textbook buyback locations at Stay Wired Coffee House or other independent booths around campus. Recent studies show that disposing of medicines by flushing them down your toilet is bad for the water supply. Some TCU nursing students have found a way to get rid of the threat of expired and unused medication. Stefan Nixon reports. 
That it was expired in 2010, so this is something that we would definitely take at the Take Back Men's event. Katie Winter originally came to TCU and earned a degree in journalism, but returned to pursue a degree in nursing. Winter says she was motivated by one thing. Um, really, I wanted to make a difference. That's, that's the bottom line. One way Winter found to make a difference is through TCU Nursing's clinical program. TCU's nursing program worked with the DEA, the Fort Worth Water Department, and the Fort Worth Emergency Services Collaborative to launch the Take Back Drugs program. Tarrant County residents were invited to bring their unused or expired medications and prescriptions to one of four locations, including Ridge Mar Mall, where Winter and her team were stationed. The point of the event was to collect as many medications as possible between 10 o'clock and 2 o'clock. By 11.15, the group here at Ridge Mar Mall had assembled more than 328 pounds of prescription drugs. The city of Fort Worth started this effort to educate the public on the proper disposal of medication. Um, you know, you're not supposed to flush your medications down the toilet. A lot of people don't know that. It gets into the water supply and, uh, you know, there's no way for them to filter all of that out. So we get trace elements of those medications. The Take Back Drugs program is usually held twice a year. However, the nursing students are coming up with a way to collect prescriptions on a more permanent basis with public drop boxes for the medications. They're really, really thankful that we're having a program like this. They said they didn't know what to do with their meds. They tried to take them to the pharmacy and said it cost money to do that. Winter says she enjoyed helping with the program and encourages students to get involved in the next one. Stefan Nixon, TCU News Now. Some TCU students showcase their various talents outside of the classroom. Each Saturday, students bake goods and show off their skills in arts and crafts at the Cowtown Farmer's Market. The Farmer's Market is at 3821 Southwest Boulevard. For more information, visit their website at cowtownfarmersmarket.com. TCU pianist Nozami EY realized her dreams of becoming a, a successful performer at a young age, working through challenges to get there. Sineha Anthony has a story. I love music. When I play, music gives me some kind of energy. Nozomi Iwai's passion for music began at the age of four, the first time she played a piano. I want to live with music. After receiving an artist diploma from TCU in 2009, she has been able to continue pursuing her passion under the tutelage of Dr. Tamash Ungar. She has a very unique sound. Unlike most of his students, Ungar says he approaches EY's music a little differently. This is because the Japanese native isn't like most musicians. EY was born visually impaired, and three years ago, she lost her sight completely. In order to demonstrate how I do things, she comes over to my piano and puts her hands on my hand. And, and she can feel what I do. And immediately she knows. It's, it's uncanny. Being blind has not limited EY. In fact, Ungar says her weakness may be her strength. I suppose the Almighty took one thing away from her and gave extra that make up for it. Those who know EY say they have been touched by her positive outlook on life. She's always very happy, so it's, it's really bringing um, a new perspective in life. Sometimes when I play for her, I, I shut my eyes to put it into a, but it's not the same. I know that I open it and light will come through. She opens it and nothing comes through. EY doesn't let her lack of sight stop her from her dream of performing music. When I perform on stage, I feel mm, make music together, not only myself. EY's happiness translates to her mother, seeing her daughter fulfill her dreams. For EY, performing music is the only future she dreams of. For me, it's, it's my life. Sneha Anthony, TCU News Now. EY headed to Japan Tuesday. She is scheduled to perform her debut recital in Tokyo May 24th. And that's all the news we have for you today. Are you sure? Are you positive? I really, really don't want to go. It's I don't been a leave. great semester, and thank you so much for watching TCU News Now. For all the latest stories and information, be sure to visit TCU360.com. I'm Kayla Travis. And I'm Mandy Neglitch. Have a wonderful summer. Woo! <laughs>